There's a war in religion going on. You know it. And right now, Bibles are booted from Navy base yes rooms. And an atheist group is telling a Georgia high school football team to punt the prayers. That's right. We've got two situations here. If you go to visit someone who's in the Navy, the guest rooms actually now no longer hold the Bibles. And then is a school actually in Gainesville, a high school there. They use a Proverbs quote, iron sharpens iron, um, up on their game plan and up, uh, uh, to inspire some of the players. And one concerned citizen wrote in and said, hey, um, we're not having this anymore. This is not freedom for us. This That's is religious. Offensive. Yeah, this is too religious, and it's being forced on the players to motivate them. I don't so know they, how having a Bible in, in, in a hotel room in a drawer is forced on anyone. If you don't want to read it, leave it in the drawer. You're not forced sure. to read it. How is, how is that implicating the Navy in any way? Way, shape or form I can't figure that one out but you would think a US uh, or you know an American organization a, a a federal run organization would be able to make their own decisions but it's atheist organizations that are pushing back on that so we're starting the show with caveman gangbangs <laughs> oh by the way the chat room wants to remind you that Colbert is a Catholic <laughs> We have a hard time making that many people think actual science is science. <laughs> I should have prepared more for this. And welcome to Atheist Airwaves, your no-look filter at current news and issues facing atheists and the atheist community. I'm Jay Guerrero. What are you laughing at? You totally messed that up, high boy. <laughs> How did I do that? You, you uh, transposed a couple of words. Okay, well, welcome to Atheist Airwaves, your no-filter look at current <laughs> news. No, no, no. <laughs> You're right what are you me. what are you on because I need some <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to say uh, oh wow <laughs> it's serious folks this is the kind of show it's gonna be try that again Jay okay welcome to atheist airwaves your no filter look at current news and issues facing atheists and the atheist community I'm Jay Guerrero I'm Felipe Martinez Amanda Stevens and I'm Christian Ferris you can find us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for atheist airwaves we record live every Tuesday at 7 30 p.m. Central so come on out and participate in the show. Bring your own drugs like Jay has. <laughs> uh, our intro audio this week was Fox News host and X View host Elizabeth Hasselbeck uh, getting all Christian. Christian. I'm not the only one on <laughs> drugs, apparently. <laughs> right on. These are good drugs. She's getting all Christian persecution complex on us. Um, I especially liked the pronunciation of "you know it." <laughs> <Right? laughs> Who was that? It was like that was great. I don't even know what she was going for with that, but <laughs> she's so street, y'all. You don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And the co-host has like no idea how government distributing the holy book of one religion might be kind of problematic. And the other one wants the government to be able to decide what religions they uh, promote, apparently, which is. Yeah. Interesting. And no one on the whole goddamn channel knows what the Constitution says. None of them. They know the Second Amendment really, really well. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's the important part, right? That's right. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> be, before, before we get too much farther into it, like I didn't want our intro to be three minutes long, but I want to play the rest of this damn clip because okay. it get only there. gets dumber from there. So uh, this is the second half of them talking about how horrible atheists are and how persecuted Christians are. You're right did we about put this that. question on Facebook? We sure did. Oh, yeah. And this is what Eric had to say. In America, we are guaranteed freedom of religion. Now it seems the only ones who are not guaranteed that are the Christian majority. I would agree with Eric, even though my name is Eric. And right. Tom says, why are atheist rights more important than everyone else's where does the Constitution say we never have to see something that offends us? All these lawsuits do is cost tax dollars, and they all offend me. And Carrie said this on Twitter, sad that we push equality unless it comes to the Christian beliefs, and then it's wrong. Very hypocritical. You know, in light of what's going on in the world and the persecution of Christians right now, how close, I would add this other question, how close do we want to get to eliminating religious freedom? in the globe, particularly here. And I carry the Constitution every single day. And, and this is a big, big point of contention. I'm a constitutionalist. And these freedom from religion groups, I don't think they have a basis in this. I really don't. They, I think they're expanding. They're overstepping the bounds on it. Right. Uh, they're passionate in what they don't believe. Yeah, they're, right. 
very passionate what I don't believe in. I don't know which part of that pisses me off more. <laughs> I know, right? It just gets worse and worse. I love the Constitution. I have no idea what the non-establishment clause means. <laughs> I carry it in my back pocket every day. Yeah. <laughs> Do you read it? Yeah. <laughs> Never opened it, but I, <laughs> I carry I it everywhere. It's like my Bible. <laughs> I, the Christian majority is the only group not guaranteed freedom of religion. Are you kidding me with that? Yep. Mm-hmm. Because they totally can they've... walk down the street and not have anyone go up to them and say, hey, have you heard the good news? <laughs> right. Yep. Um, uh, Christian privilege everywhere in here. Um, you know, sorry, you're making gestures <laughs> that I'm <it's> like, okay. <laughs> um, your rights are intact. Nothing has happened. All you've lost is uh, your, your unfair privilege. advantage. <laughs> your yeah. privilege yeah. to yeah. push, use government organizations to push your freaking religion on everybody else. That's what you have lost here. There is no loss of rights. You have, you still, right now, in this day and age, even after years of hard wars on Christmas and religion, you still have more religious freedom than anybody else. Any other religion, any other non religion. I guess there's only one non-religion. <laughs> right, but uh, so so this whole thing was about the the navy uh, having their their lodges with Bibles in them. I, I presu- I'm pre- pretty sure it was the the Gideons who put those yeah. Bibles there. And you know, for um, a private owned hotel chain or motel chain or whatever, there's there's nothing that they're doing wrong. It, it's stupid, but okay, that they they have that ability to do so. But this is a state run. It's actually a federal run organization. So. The Freedom uh, Freedom from Religion Foundation. I'm having trouble enunciating today. <laughs> uh, back in March, they they started a uh, well. They they wrote the the foundation uh, was the Navy Exchange Service Commander NEXCOM, uh, and said, "Hey, this isn't this isn't okay. You need to stop doing this." To which the Navy initially replied, "Well, we're going to leave that up to the uh, the chaplain of each individual area." Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah that's going to work totally. really well. We're going yeah. to let the Christians decide whether the Christians are <laughs> are doing the right thing. <laughs> right. Or not. Um, and eventually what wound up happening is they, uh, they, they filed a lawsuit and the Navy said, oh, well, I guess we should probably not do that. Right. Um, and, and thankfully, it worked, at least for a little while. But we'll right. get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but this all does come down to the, the whole Christian persecution complex, which is complete and total BS. It's, it's ridiculous. Andrew Seidel, he works for the, uh, the Freedom from Religion Foundation. He, uh, he wrote a piece about Fox News' coverage on, uh, on this whole topic. I'm and not going to lie. I kind of have a man crush on Andrew Seidel now. <laughs> I was going to say, man, if this dude isn't gay, I'm going to try and make him gay, and I'll become gay, and I like the gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole lot of gay. Okay. Well, you got a problem with it? No. No, I'm just, just noting Does it turn that. you on? Yes. <laughs> gay theists. <laughs> gay theists. That's, That's a thing right. now. Yep. Um, so he, he wrote, um, it wasn't a really lengthy piece, but I'm not going to read the entirety of it. I'm just going to read his closing yes. um, because it, it's excellent. He says, Fox News, take note, like the boy who cried wolf, claims of religious persecution will lose all meaning if Christian persecution is shouted every time an unfair Christian privilege is ended. I don't know what that was either. <laughs> it's okay, over. It's gone now. Yeah. Back up and read I'm going to try that again. Fox News, take note, like the boy who cried wolf, claims of religious persecution will lose all meaning if quote unquote, Christian persecution is shouted every time an unfair Christian privilege is ended. The days of Christian privilege are coming to an end. The atheists, agnostics, secular, secularists, secularists, <laughs> free thinkers, the nuns are coming. We are not coming for your liberty. We are coming to end your unjustified privileges and buttress that all important wall separating state and church. Stop crying wolf, if only because very soon you're going to sound awfully hoarse. Bam. This dude is amazing. You need yeah. to just go read the entire statement that he that he wrote against uh, you know Fox News or in reply to Fox News's coverage of it because from beginning to end it's just like left right punch up you know it just yeah. he just nails it every way. I love the hell out of Andrew Seidel. Um, unfortunately, all of that victory didn't last very long. Nope. Surprise! <laughs> I'm so surprised because the Navy has put Bibles back in the hotel rooms because, you know, 
That's their thing, man. Well, first of all, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. First of all, I would like to say, like, what do the Gideons do besides buy Bibles for every church in America? We had this discussion with you, like, <laughs> like was that's this... my biggest thing. I'm like, are you like feeding the hungry somewhere? Or are you just buying a shit ton of Bibles in bulk? They they run sweatshops that they glue Bibles together. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I would, yeah, I would believe that. Didn't we completely. have like a, a thing in the chat room the other day where we, we mm-hmm. issued? Challenge to, to capture a Gideon. Yes, we did. <laughs> Are they like leprechauns? <laughs> yes. Has anyone yet captured a Gideon? I I haven't even been able to see one, much less capture one. So they're like fairies, aren't they? Yeah, they are. We should lay a trap. Um, I what I want to know though is that doesn't this make it worse? Because literally, what they've done is they've taken Navy personnel and engaged them in distributing Bibles. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just, they're like, hey, hope you're all Christian. If not. <laughs> Fuck you. Right. I mean, yeah. it's not the Gideons. They didn't call the Gideons and say, hey, you need to come move your Bibles. Okay, you need yeah. to come back and move them back. Yeah. Yeah. We're they, using taxpayer funds to put Bibles in these back in these rooms. Yeah. And they, they, made, they took a bad situation that was already unconstitutional and made it more unconstitutional. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well Winning. done. Yeah. So, I would totally say, like, let's start throwing the gospel of the flying spaghetti monster in hotel rooms, but that's a waste of money. Right? Instead, let's go, like, feed some people or something. I don't know. Crazy I, don't know ideas. I, I don't know if it's necessarily a waste of money. It would be really much more entertaining for me if I went to a hotel and there was a flying spaghetti monster Bible in there. I mean, it's a much better read. There's no <laughs> denying. <laughs> it makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think what would be better is just to go and get permission to do it rather than actually do it because really all you really need to do is piss them off Mm -hmm. get them screaming about the war on religion and all that stuff and then go take the money you would have spent to distribute books no one's going to read in their hotel rooms and uh, throw it towards something worthwhile let's 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 strike a common ground maybe we can have them mark out every instance of the word jesus and god in these bibles so that they're all redacted. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Navy will be all work. about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if these sailors are so Christian, why do they need to be provided a Bible? Why don't they have their own Bible already? This is for guests. Um, and, and if no, you're um, pocket- it's a naval lodge. That means it's open only to um, like military personnel and things like that usually. But it's their families. This is yeah. family families watching. Too. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, and you know the Constitution's however, already in your pocket. You can't put a Bible in your other pocket. You just it's be... Bible armor. Every soldier should have Bibles all over yes, to stop all the that's bullets. That's why we sent them to Iraq without properly armored Humvees. We just sent a shit ton of Bibles. With <laughs> totally works the same way. Yes, as, it's, it's as also armor. the Navy. They get drunk and lose it. So you gotta have an extra. <laughs> that's offensive, sir. You are an anti-Navite. okay so the uh navy spokesman commander ryan perry uh wrote to stars and stripes which i'm sure is a riveting magazine uh do you know what you know what stars and stripes is yeah yeah, okay i've I've seen it before for those of you who don't it's a it's an it's a, a military publication that's distributed on base right so he wrote that decision and the decision to put them all back and uh take them out the uh, thinking about in the first place, that decision and our religious accommodation policies with regard to the placement of religious materials are under review. While that review is underway, religious materials removed from Navy, Navy Lodge rooms will be returned. F you, buddy. <laughs> Pretty much. But this is, I mean, like last week we were just talking about the National Guard, not just making them available in rooms, but physically handing them to all of recruits. And what they're doing here, what... <clears throat> What the Navy was going to do was not destroy the Bibles. They were just going to keep them behind the front desk. So if you wanted them, you could go request them. I'd be okay with that. I'm okay with that, too. I mean, you know, if if they're free books and someone's dropping them off, as long as they're open to allowing us to drop off, you know, the God delusion or... You know, the Book of Mormon. (laughs) Seriously, the Council on American Islamic... uh, Shoot, now I've forgotten the acronym... Uh, relations Council on American Islamic Relations will send you a Quran if you request one from them. So we could just, you know, like be all, hey, this Navy base really Navy needs what? some Qurans. <laughs> <laughs> will they actually? Can we like solicit them to send them to the Navy base? I I don't know, like but 
it would be an interesting conundrum to put them in. Because I don't want to impersonate them, because then you're kind of yeah. you're, you're yeah. playing with fire there. But if but we I'd can call like, them up and just be like, hey, uh, this Navy base is very much lacking, or this Navy Lodge is very much lacking in, in the Quran, and they've expressed an interest. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should totally send them enough Qurans to put in all of their rooms. Just All we really need to do, we can do this. Forget Qurans. Just say, you know, we want God is not great in every book, in every room. We'll provide them. Is that okay? If they say no, we've got a lawsuit and freedom from religion founder Andrew Seidel can come to our rescue. <laughs> um, if they say yes, we don't have to do it. We just have to tell people they said yes and that we intend to do it. And they'll get... And then That's we true. release a statement to Fox News. Right, exactly. Yay! <laughs> so have we come up with yet another good idea on the show we're that we're gonna not going to do? <laughs> I believe we have. <laughs> we need some follow chat, through, folks. Chat room. <laughs> you have. So if you don't capture a Gideon in the next week, <laughs> <laughs> we need to appoint someone to follow through on all these awesome ideas we have. Right. Next com, you call them and make them say that we can put Christopher Hitchens' books in the Navy Lodge rooms. That would be awesome. It's a win win. Okay, let's move on. No. Rabbi Eric. No. H. Yaffe, I'm moving on. You Damn can't it. stop me because you're high. <laughs> <laughs> and injured. <laughs> Rabbi Eric H. Yaffe is a lecturer, writer, and president emeritus of the Union for Reform Judaism, which is a real party uh, organization. It's a real party? Party Jews are in the house tonight. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> that was good. That may be show title right there. All right. Uh, so this qualifies him. He's a rabbi, and that perfectly qualifies him <laughs> to lecture to atheists, which he did this week in the Huffing- Huffington Post. Um, I'm going to be driving home, and that's going to pop in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so he described in his column in the Huffing- Huffington Post today. Man, I'm like in a contact <laughs> high. <laughs> You're getting high by osmosis or something, dude. Um, he describes three... Three of the most common mistakes that atheists make, uh, and clearly he underestimates the, the kinds of mistakes that Jay can make, <laughs> In, including, you know, back medication that he can ingest. <clears throat> so um, I thought we could just walk through his points and talk about whether we agree, disagree. I'm sure we're going to disagree with most of them, but maybe he has a point on some of these. Uh, the first common mistake he cites is that atheists dismiss, often with contempt and Sir, I object to that. <laughs> um, the religious experience of other people. So they dismiss, often with contempt, the religious experience of other people. Basically here he's saying that atheists will say that someone saying that they felt the presence of a god or gods or the divine uh, is having a psychological or biological experience uh, that they are then assigning to a god. They will dismiss it in the... They'll dismiss it under the realm of scientific... Yes. Theory. Yes. Or it's a proven psychological phenomenon. And often with contempt. Yes, often with contempt. Which I said, what an idiot this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like, you know, if you go and stay the night in a haunted house. Yeah. You're pretty much going to encounter a ghost. Or get scared. Yeah, least, it's just you you've had creeped. this put in your head and you're like, yeah. Yeah, the bathroom door opened all by itself, so I know it was the spirit of Mary Lou, or whatever. Who's Mary Lou? You know, that Whoever. girl who died Mary in the Mary Lou Retton, you know, the, the gymnast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's doing, like, ghostly backflips through yeah. the... Uh... <laughs> Woo! Ten into the afterlife. <laughs> I do think I do this. I mean, I do dismiss when people tell me that they have religious experience. I do dismiss it. Often with contempt, but I don't think it's a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. I, I, I dismiss it. I often just shut my mouth. It, well, it depends on the, the company I'm in, but yeah. Yeah, I, I told the, the Jehovah's Witnesses once. They came to my door and they're like, hey, you know, God and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, you know what? Whatever it is that you feel when you go to church or whatever, never felt it. And they're like, well, how do you, how do you know? And I was like, well, isn't it God? Wouldn't you know? <laughs> Like, <laughs> I gotta say, I have felt it. I mean, I have felt that thing in churches. I, I have like God touched you. No, but show I, me on the doll where God touched <laughs> you. <laughs> I mean, I felt that presence and that that overwhelming feeling. I mean, I've, I when I was you know still a Catholic, I would. I mean, I was openly you know, weeping in church. I you mean, know, I've, I've felt that too. And every badass concert I've been to. That was my next thing. <laughs> 1992, The Cure, Riverport Amphitheater, St. Louis, Missouri. 
Robert Smith is God. I was in the presence <laughs> during uh, From the Edge of the Deep Green Sea. Holy cow. I was, same thing, openly weeping. Uh, <laughs> Where the playing boys don't cry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, so I'm just saying that, you know, I feel like I'm in, I mean, he's also talking about it like atheists have no, no atheists have religious backgrounds. Like we would mm-hmm. not understand what that, what, what it is. They he thinks they're about. all me. Right. right. <laughs> or Stevens, apparently. Because she's a sociopath. I with... mean, I went to church. I did all the Bible studies. Mm-hmm. I did all of that. And every time I just felt like a terrible person because whatever it was that everybody else around me was feeling and experiencing, I was just kind of like, so this is all bullshit. Yeah? I'm, <laughs> I'm alone in this? <laughs> you know? And I was like... Just, I felt like everybody in the building was judging me. And then if there was a God, he was like, yo, you need to straighten up. <laughs> and I just couldn't get it together. I was like, I don't know what I'm missing here. Did you tell them this? No. I just no, they stopped going to They would have just church. kicked her right out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or worse. Or I was going to say, exorcism. Yeah. And no more Amanda after that. Yeah. Right? So you're a liar, too, is what you're telling me. Yes, like anyone else is, yes. I was going to say, that that's one of those situations where maybe you just keep, especially because you're surrounded yeah. by crazy people who think they have superpowers. Yeah. I'm and sorry, was... is that that contempt again? <laughs> I feel like that's contempt, yes. <laughs> is that a mistake? Okay, think... so, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, all right. So uh, number two, they assert, they being atheists, assert that since there are no valid religions, but that religions do good things, the task of smart people is to create a religion without God, or in other words, a religion without religion. Go ahead. Oh, no. Let me gather my thoughts. You go ahead. Okay. That's a really <laughs> stupid statement. It's going to take it a little is. while to like, okay. put it all together. I, I want to read actually his, his words for this one, because I think he also tips his hand on it. Um, uh, and I think he's really talking about a mistake that religionists make. Um, and that we as atheists see pretty plainly. So he writes, quote, philosophers have made such proposals before, of course, but what they all have in common is that they do not work. Philosophy can do many things, but it cannot create deep loyalty, profound engagement, or a willingness to sacrifice for one's beliefs. Religion, whether of the liberal or orthodox variety, does precisely that. And basically what he's saying here is that religion is really good at controlling people. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's it, it, and I couldn't agree more. It is. It's it a, really is. It's a really good uh, tool to control people. And I just think that controlling people in that way is not a good thing. And that's why I'm totally against the idea of any kind of religion. I don't really think even an atheist religion would be a great idea because eventually everything gets perverted and turned into like this means to control everybody who's part of it to get you to hate gay people or to hate women or to subject other races. You can use any religion to do that. It's dangerous. It becomes some sort of dogma, whether it's religious or otherwise. Right. (laughs) But I I also think there are components of that in any group. I mean, absolutely. I mean, um, look at your, your political groups. I mean, the same thing's happening there. It's human nature to just click. Right. In group, out group. Yeah. Yeah. Form it, do it. Yeah. Humans Mm -hmm. are clannish creatures. Right. And religion though is particularly insidious because they offer you eternal damnation. I mean, really psychological problems in a lot of ways. Normal groups may uh, demonize the out group, but they're not, they're not trying to warp your psyche, uh, which is what religion does and why to uh, this douchebag's point, uh, it's so effective at controlling people. Yeah, you, mm-hmm. get, you, you, as we've said so many times, you create the problem, you create the the cycle of uh, you have a problem, but we can help you fix it eventually when you die. But in order to get that fixed, you have to keep coming to us. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to uh, Felipe's point, I don't want to create a religion. I think that no. you know, I do because the, there's wanna, a lot of money. I want to make like millions of dollars <laughs> off stupid people. I know. I feel really like I am kind of torn about that. I, know. <laughs> I vote for Pope Jay. Pope Jay, Jay Austin. No. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants that. <laughs> that would be awful. I'd have to cut my hair. I can't do that. Uh, no, you could do the you know yeah. Native American spiritualism thing. I bet you that there would be you very pos- yeah. very uh, very popular. Yeah. Um, don't give me ideas, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we never do anything with our ideas anyway. We <laughs> <You> don't. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Um, I'm just thinking that, you know, the, the things, because he's talking about, you know, atheists looking at religions, the good things religion accomplishes and wanting to replace that with, you know, with religion without religion. 
the good things that I see that religion do have nothing to do with the religion components. It's about mm-hmm. the community components. And mm-hmm. I can't think of, I've tried really hard over the last couple of days to think of one religion based thing that religions do that is good. And I can't think of a single one. Yeah, religion like, based yeah. things that religions do. Yeah, mm-hmm. no. yeah religious individuals mm-hmm. do yeah. good things. But and as a group, like look at the Catholic Church. They send missionaries into South America and Africa and whatnot. And they're like, hey, we're going to feed you and teach you about Jesus. No condoms! Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's huge AIDS crises in right. these countries where they're ministering because no condoms right. guys so you know uh, humanists do uh, disaster relief the same way the catholic missionaries mm-hmm. do and they do all the same things because it's a positive community they don't do the messed up no condoms thing mm-hmm. because they don't have a religion that teaches them stupid dogma like god hates little god hates it when you put latex on your dick duh sheepskin <laughs> <laughs> goat intestines sir yeah all right so let's move on to number 3 number 3 Atheists see the world of belief in black and white, either or terms, which is really vague. But I reject that as a, a thing almost categorically. Yeah, I do. I I don't think humans are. I mean, in some cases, things can be black and white, but I don't think any human can look at every single situation as black and white. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that I thought was interesting about this one is that he's basically painting atheists in black and white while accusing <laughs> yeah. them yeah. of always doing that. I'm like, <laughs> excuse me, sir, but <laughs> you have well, a little... Here's bit- a mirror. That, too, uh, to me, goes back to religion. Like, everybody was cool when the story of Adam and Eve and God's creation was, was you know, like, their story. And that's cool. It's a story. But the minute that you turn around and are like, also, it's the basis of actual scientific creation. <laughs> like, you can't really have both. Right. You can, you can have your story or you can have science. And I, I think that that's a black and white issue that they're kind of ignoring. Or you can be Kevin Ham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing that I, I did want to bring out is that when he writes that atheists look at the sheer number of religious doctrines out there and say that it all must be bullshit, um, I, I also object to that. But let I me. Don't. Let me <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me read what he writes. He, write, he writes, uh, if there are 10,000 contrary religious doctrines, it does not follow that they are all false. That is true. Yes, it is. You cannot say that they're all false because most of them are false um, or even some of them are false. However, if there are 10,000 contrary religious doctrines, it doesn't mean that even one is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, we expect that if um, you are connected with a supreme being, that there would be some result of this. That there would be some evidence, you know, that you would be better, more well off than, you know, the Baptists would be more well off than the Mormons or the Buddhists. They would experience some sort of benefit from mm-hmm. having this direct connection to the truth with the capital T and God. And we see none of that. So I think it is actually warranted to say that it's probably all bullshit until there is evidence that it's not and to just say, well, it could be true. While that's true, you aren't, uh, you aren't uh, being a smart person by believing that in the absence of, not, not only in the af- absence of evidence, but in the absence of evidence that you would expect to find were one of these people actually talking to God. I mean, it could be true. I could also be an aerospace engineer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, fuck you. No, you couldn't. No, you're a tinkle box doctor. <laughs> PhD. <laughs> Nobody ever got me one of those. Dude. Oh, we, had, we had in the chat room. But not the PhD, only the master's degree. It wasn't in my name, yeah. though. Uh, okay. Well, uh, Josh, <clears throat> please make that happen for me. <laughs> Get on it, Josh. Jay is high and he's tearing up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone got final thoughts on Rabbi? Let's move on from okay. this jackass. <laughs> That's you, Amanda. <laughs> oh, did we move something? Sorry. Uh, oh know. no, it's Jay. I'm sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, it's me. I'm an, I'm I'm seriously getting a contact high. Oh thing. yeah, it is me. <laughs> Sitting next <Okay>. to Jay. <clears throat> this this story, there's not a whole lot of substance to these uh, to to the poll. It's basically a poll on religiosity <laughs> over the past 61 years. It's the best news ever, though. 
It, it really is. Um, we saw uh, an uptick in religiosity following, uh, you know, with the baby boomers. And then in the 60s and 70s with peace and love and, you know, the Vietnam War and all of that, we saw a downtick. But it kind of leveled off until like the last 15 years. And suddenly we've got this huge decrease over the last 15 years, way bigger than we've ever seen. I mean, that's really all there is to, it's in to, to extrapolate from this, from this. I mean, you can look at it and say, okay, you can see the upticks and the downticks when certain major events happen, you know, in the U.S. Like around 2000, uh, 2001, you see a big uptick uh, with 9-11, you know, the, the, again in 1998, you see a big uptick with, you know, major disasters and, and terrorist attacks and things like that. But over the course of time, obviously the trend shows that it's falling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, basically this poll looked at a lot of different other polls and so they looked at things like, you know, the importance of religion in people's lives, that's down. Uh, church attendance, that's down. People who say they are uh, of no religion, the nuns, um, that is way up. And mm -hmm. uh, the result is 2013 <gasps> had the lowest level of religiosity of any year we can measure mm -hmm. ever. Yay. It's a good sign. <laughs> but it's still a majority. Wasn't it still like 61%? Oh it's, oh, it's more than, I think it was more like, I didn't look, I but it was like 70, I think. Yeah. Um, which is not great but i mean it literally the trend line is going <laughs> towards straight down um and if you look at you know we've talked about the tipping point on this show a couple of times over the last six months or so and you know once 10 percent of the people get i thought it was 15 percent. i think it was well whatever it is we're already past that i mean once they get a hold of an idea like this it's inevitable that it's going to take over and um i there's really <laughs> never been a better time, a better age on this planet to be an mm -hmm. atheist than right frickin' now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, just looking at the graph, and it's just a very, very. Uh, I'm not looking at the numbers. I'm simply looking at the uh, the graphic. The pretty mm -hmm. pictures. In, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> in in the last. Ooh, it's red. <laughs> <laughs> it looks. It appears as though that from 2012 to 2013, there is a steeper drop yeah. than in any previous point on the graph. Yeah. And it's. Promising. It's free fall. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, just, I, I can't wait to see what it, you know, what it does over the next few years because I think it's really unless and, unless there's a major major thing, yeah. the economic depression, something like that, yep. then we will yep. see it start to creep back up. Yeah, yep. we've talked about that before. Poverty and hellacious times makes people tr reach out to all kinds of weirdness. Um, but I, don't, I really don't think we're going back. I really don't. Nor do um, I. I mean, I, I don't think I, we're, we're not going to have major backpedaling of people going, oh, no, no, I don't believe in God. Oh, no, no, I do believe in God. We're not going to see that on a large scale, I don't think. Yeah, but how many of these people, they don't have religion, but how many of them still believe or how many of them believe in, like, ghosts and things like that? Like, sure. I know a lot of people who claim to be, like, not believe in a God, but they'll, believe, they'll watch, like, those ghost adventure shows. Yeah. It's a documentary thing, and they think it's fact. Yeah, I can't stand that. I, but it's probably a lot. Um, and you know, not when they say they're not religious, a lot of those people are still going to say, yes, I believe in a God I'm spiritual mm -hmm. or some nonsense like this, but all it, I mean, that's such a, that's such a, it's a cop out. Well, right. But I mean, it's also so, so easy to push over. I mean, that person doesn't care as soon as everyone around them, more and more people are saying there is no God. Those people are just going to say, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, they're not going to put up much of a fight. So I have a, an interesting, well, hopefully it's interesting, uh, point of discussion. I was talking with my brother last night. He listens to every show. Okay. And uh, he, he's been an atheist for many, many years. Uh, he was talking, we were talking about how, you know, religion is declining, and he actually read a couple studies, which is surprising because normally he just doesn't, he's kind of like me, he doesn't really think so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's genetic. <laughs> um, and he saw that, you know, the, the, he saw this trend. Religiosity is really on the downfall. And we were discussing it, and he's like, you know, I hope it doesn't become something that's just trendy to say that, you know, oh, I'm an atheist. And I, I don't think that we're going to see that. I don't think trendy is, is, is going to be, I mean, for, for you to go, atheists. yeah, I, I don't see that being, you know, when, when there's, it's still harder for a lot of people to come out as atheists than it is as gay. Sure. Um, sure. And it can have so many detrimental effects on it's your life. It's gonna happen. It happened. It happened to the gay community. I mean, I it's I gonna mean, happen to the atheist community. And here's the great news for us, Jay. I mean, in a couple of years, we're gonna be able to say, you know, we had an atheist podcast before it was cool to be atheists. <laughs> you know, we're gonna be I'm the about to throw this mic at you. You're making us <laughs> atheist hipsters now. <laughs> 
I have never hated you, you more. <laughs> you are all atheist hipsters. I'm okay, sorry. so you say it happened with the gay community. I can't think of anyone oh, I've please. encountered who said who's come out as gay and they're not actually gay. I don't think anyone's going to do that with atheism either. But I think that they. I, so that's what I'm saying. You you think that we're going to have atheist posers? No, that's what I'm saying is I don't think we are. But he brought up the the point of discussion. Okay. Well, that's what I'm, I, that's what I'm asking you guys. Okay. Well. well like, is there a a theological equivalent of bisexuality? Because, like, I, <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird question. Like, I I have a friend. This is an anecdote, so don't take it as like sure. gospel or anything. But a friend uh-huh. who was, uh, you know, in high school, she came out as a lesbian, and okay. now she is happily married to a man and has children. Mm-hmm. So. You know, is there is there a happy medium there? Is there like I was raised Christian and then I became an atheist and now I use essential oils for all of my health needs? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I believe I believe that happens. Sure, um, I believe that will, that happen that will happen more and more as atheism gains traction. I think that if you're an atheist, like I'm an atheist, there's no going back. I I mean, in the absence of real evidence, there's no I I can't. I can't just say, oh, you know what, I kind of want to be Catholic again. <laughs> I mean, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think that's a really good point to make, Amanda, is that, you know, the, there's certain, there, there's varying degrees of it. And as it becomes okay to be an atheist, I can see where people would do that. Huh? Yeah. You know, especially in their formative years when they're going to school and they want to join this crowd or be yeah. a little rebel, rebellious or whatever. Okay. I can, I can see where that's actually a valid point. I'll stand corrected on that. I've changed my opinion. Wow. Look Woo! at you. Go, Amanda. You're welcome. You're welcome, J- Jay's brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, so among those non-religious folks are the uh, the gay and lesbian, bisexual, transgender community. Um, they, There was a Gallup poll who said basically in a survey of national adults, um, LGBT citizens were 47% non-religious, which I think is kind of duh because like <laughs> by and large religion has tended to single those folks out for special eternal punishment not to mention a lot of hate on earth so Although, i can see why you would be I, like Meh. i gotta say i i know a lot of religious gay people yeah. and, yeah. and i don't mind. understand it and yeah. like i i mean <laughs> as an active atheist i feel like i i you know and an ally mm-hmm. i don't feel you know i that's obvious- not a kid Okay, as a gay person, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just for Jay though, um, I, I mean, I, you know, it's it's hard for me to to say say what I feel because I'm like I can't tell you how to how to live yeah. your life or ex- yeah. express you know your opinions, but it's really freaking it really freaks me out that you can have a person who believes in a religion. And New Testament, Old Testament, both call which who you are, who your core identity, one of the core things about your identity is immoral and abomination. And how you can say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's Yeah, true. but that's cool. But I right. like church. They have a good band. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually know people who say exactly <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's kind of like um, poor white people in the South voting Republican yeah. overwhelmingly. It's like you're voting against your your best interests but i guess that makes you feel better so (laughs) somehow go for it man um the the interesting part of this study though was there there tends to be this uh well i mean in in polls and things before it's been shown that women tend to be more religious um overall yes and whereas in this poll uh lgbt non-religious folks were pretty evenly split so it wasn't like Men and women both mm-hmm. were non-religious at about the same rate. Yeah, there was like three percentage points difference, and which is basically error, error margin. margin yeah. yeah. So yeah, maybe women don't naturally default to religion. Although error I've, of margin, hold on. Uh, margin, margin of error. Of error. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Jay! You and your highness is spreading, <laughs> spreading across wow, the like table. Drugs make and Jay you can smarter. Be high, and you can be high. You can be high. <laughs> You're like a druggy Oprah. <laughs> it slows my brain down, honestly, so, so I can think about shit. <laughs> oh, so God what I didn't all. realize until I heard this is that it's actually a thing that uh, 
there's a belief out there that women are just naturally inclined to be religious, and I've never heard of that. I just thought it was just like, oh, hey, you're religious, you're kind of born like that, you're raised like that, but that just sounds kooky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's, it's kind of funny because um, the religious society tends to tell women that they are, you know, shameful and dirty and awful, and mm-hmm. so women tend to cling to that because that is their only salvation. Like, I am awful and dirty and terrible, and I have these urges, and oh my god, won't more. you save me? <laughs> <laughs> you should be so lucky. Um, yeah, so I think that that is why maybe women tend to, I mean... That's a, I haven't heard that one before, but that, that makes a lot of sense. So sort of almost like a religious Stockholm Syndrome kind of thing. Uh, a, a little bit, bit yeah. That's cool. um, the, the thing, I read a, a, a blog post that credit Christina did about that, um, and you know she was hesitant to speculate about why what the difference would be. But one of the things she said that I disagreed with, and I really liked her piece on this, was that she said, you know, uh, kind of what you just alluded to, Amanda, which was, uh, you know, maybe that we can say that this is not something that's hardwired into women, that it's something societal or or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know that we can say that though. I mean, I don't know. I mean, she said, you know, she made it sound like it would be ridiculous to assume that gay women or bisexual women would be wired differently than straight women. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's quite r- ridiculous. I don't think we can rule that out. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've shown the, the brain waves of, of homosexuals tend to um, reflect the opposite sex. So like females, and hmm. this may have been disproven since mm-hmm. I first read this, so, you know. Um, but yeah, Do your they own said, research. <laughs> That's why said, I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, there, there was a study that said basically that, like, women um, who were gay tended to think more like men. And so maybe that Could be. has some bearing on it. Sounds like there needs to be some more science done. That, could that there you go. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> so the other thing that I I want to couple that with something that I really love from Greta, Chris, Greta Christina's blog on this. Um, she wrote a call to arms for the LGBT community uh, that I want to read because I just loved it. <clears throat> so she writes, the other thing I want to... <laughs> okay, paper Mick Crumpler. Um, the other thing I want to pull out of this data... Almost half of LGBT Americans are not religious, so LGBT organizations need to wake the fuck up. LGBT organizations that represent LGBT people as religious in an attempt to make us seem mainstream and nice and that throw LGBT atheists under the bus, which is, again, almost half, need to wake the fuck up. LGBT organizations that bend over backwards to court interfaith alliances while ignoring alliance building with atheist organizations and communities need to wake the fuck up. Major LGBT conferences that have approximately 764,906 sessions about religion with three sessions about atheism need to wake the fuck up. Seriously. And I'm not at all still bitter at all about the Nikki Aragoose thing. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. at all bitter about that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring out about this study before we move on is that if you look at the data by age, it gets even better. I mean, it's what, 49%, something like that, mm-hmm. um, overall in the LGBT community. If you look at LGBT people who are between the ages of 18 and 34, rates of non-religiosity are a whopping 56%. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. That's more than the general population. I mean, yeah. that is super good news, no matter how you slice it. Because it's kind of the first time that you can be both, mm-hmm. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Sure. Like, I, I read a lot of history. I'm a giant history dork. And, yeah. and <laughs> there are a lot of instances of people who are homosexual in like the 1700s or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they cling ever tighter to their religion because mm-hmm. if I let people know that I'm, you know, sleeping with stable boys and whatnot, <laughs> I'm going to get my ass kicked. So I have to be ultra religious and maybe that will stop it because God loves me. The night doth protest too much syndrome is what I'm <laughs> yes. going to call that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, a good offense is the best defense from being mm-hmm. murdered. Yeah. 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 
And that's I, I love people when they when they bring that argument into it. Like nobody's ever wanted to be gay before until now, and you people are making it okay. And it's like, well, before they could get their head bashed in or be dragged behind a carriage or you know, whatever. Burned at the stake. Yeah. Actual persecution. Yeah, drawn yeah in little quarter. things. <laughs> yeah, things now. that'll ruin your day, like being <laughs> murdered. Yeah, now people can't just murder you on a whim most of the time. Oh, At least can. in America. <laughs> but. What? Sorry, I was saying you should break now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Corpus Christi ate these meats every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. This weekend we'll be meeting at B&J's. If you guys uh, aren't familiar with that, then you obviously haven't been to our meetups. It's off of Airline, SPID, come out if you haven't come out before. I might be there, and if I am, I'll be high. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best J we've already established. <laughs> Uh, go to ccatheist.com for a list of our public events, and if you're interested in connecting with our affiliates, visit southtexascor.com. All right, let's move on. Aaron Mason is a science teacher. He's not, a, he's not a very good science teacher, I'm afraid. <laughs> he shouldn't be a Scientist. science teacher. Yeah. Air quotes around the science teacher. In 1996, he decided it would be very sciencey to make an eighth grade uh, class watch a creationist video and then follow that up with a guest speaker to talk about how the Earth is thousands and thousands of years old. Well, he's not wrong. It is thousands and thousands <laughs> and thousands and thousands and thousands. Millions of thousands of years old. <laughs> Uh, Mason was suspended without pay for two days for those shenanigans. Uh, and I find it really hard to believe that in the intervening 18 years that he was keeping his nose completely clean, but he managed not to get in any trouble between then and now. But this a week, he um, invited a guy named Ranger Gary Horton. He's not like a ranger. Rangers in quotation marks. Right. It's <laughs> like a nickname. People call him Ranger. I'm going to call him Ranger <laughs> Rick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but he, he invited him to speak to uh, the middle school, like the entire middle school, not just his science class, but the entire middle school. And the administration, administration was like, sure, sounds great. It's great. And of course, it turned into a Christian preaching gig with a heavy emphasis on how they're so persecuted in our uh, country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now, in the school's defense, uh, they did talk to, this, to Ranger Rick before the event and said, Okay, now you can't talk about this, this, and this. You know, no preaching the gospel and all that stuff. You need to actually talk about real things. Um, That's the part that irritates me about this. Is if they had that discussion with him, mm -hmm. they had a good idea of what he'd like to talk about. Yeah, that, that, yeah that's <laughs> yeah. a good point. I mean, I didn't even think about that, but yeah. Uh, they realized there was a risk. I can't imagine they go to every speaker and say, say that. These are the topics you can't discuss? No. I mean, you're here to discuss one thing. Hey, go talk about it. Generally. I don't know. I don't run a school or anything, but I would Thank assume God. that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I will never get to sleep tonight thinking about Jay running a school. It would be awesome. It would be a fun school. <laughs> It would be high Jay, not normal Jay. Right. There would be no class of any kind, but... Tune in, drop out. No. <laughs> so, actually, during the course of his speech, he says, uh, Ranger Rick told, told the students, apparently the school thought I would not mention anything about what I believe in, what I would die for. It's like, well, damn. <laughs> and he says, I'm convinced after all of these years that the con Constitution still protects my right to stand up for what I believe. So all of these years, and this guy still doesn't know what's in the Constitution. I mean, these people who love the Constitution uh, and the Bible, they know what neither of those documents say. And I cannot account for this. What do you mean you can't account for I, it? I cannot figure it out like if i if i think a document is important i know what it says well yeah they've just been told it's important they selectively <laughs> edit both documents <laughs> to feature the positions that they care to right endorse. This, our whole theme tonight is really is christian persecution based which it is often <laughs> but um i wanted to, to bring up a story that someone told me this week about uh, it was actually a new listener of ours, someone I turned on to Atheist Airwaves, was listening to one of our recent episodes, and her roommate came in and heard it and got really pissed. Well, I, well, I can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, Have you been on our show? <laughs> he, he, got, he got pissed because it was atheist. And uh. 
I was really, really impressed and proud of the fact that this person said, well, you can carry your ass out because I'm not going to stop listening to it. Nice. So, I mean, it's it's good that, you know, at least when we're discussing these things, hopefully we're giving people a little bit of, you know, something to stand behind. Well, and I hope more and more people will do that because I know a lot of people who would be embarrassed and cowed by being confronted so angrily right. by a Christian like that. And this person, it was actually surprised me, this person seemed to me like the kind of person who would have just been like, oh, I'm sorry, click, and turned it off but yeah. I'm just I'm hopeful that what we're doing here is having an effect on a, a broader scale with people like that and going no you know what this is this is I'm not doing anything wrong you yeah. you, you go go listen to whatever you want to listen to. to paraphrase Fox News what's wrong with having an atheist podcast on the internet it's not hurting anybody <laughs> 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 it's just there if you want to listen to it right you don't have to turn it on if you don't want to listen exactly you can walk away from your roommate's room and not listen to our show huge mistake however you, can, you have the right to do that um at least one parent was outraged and they got a uh, they complained to the school and got a private letter of apology from the principal who also wrote an angry letter, Ranger Rick, uh, which was, Ranger Rick. <laughs> which he printed in, you know, the principal also printed his newsletter. So we have a copy of it. I'm just going to read a little bit, a little portion of it because this, honestly, the principal of the school seems pissed. <laughs> and he also mentioned that he was not present during the thing. So I, given the level of anger in this letter, I have to believe that this principal would have pulled the plug had he actually been in the room. So he wrote, a man with your patriotism, Ranger Rick, certainly should understand the law of the land explicitly provides for separation of church and state. You took advantage of a captive audience to deliver a message that we did not ask for, and one that is not even legal to promote in a public school. Your references to religion throughout your presentation were unacceptable. Your lack of acceptance for people who believe differently than you has no place in schools. I am stunned that you keep getting asked to speak at public schools and you can and I can assure you that I will do everything I can to make sure that other public schools don't make the same mistake that we made allowing you into our school under false pretenses you should be ashamed of yourself and the American Freedom Assembly which is the group he belongs to please do not ever contact our school again can we have a round of applause yeah right I'll clap. I'll clap. Atheist clap. We're going to call it atheist clap. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like to get too boisterous. Um, but I think that's... We don't? <laughs> you know, I, thought I, we, I thought we were all about contempt. Yeah, I know. I, that's true. <laughs> but that's a mistake, and I'm trying to, you know, keep it under control. Um, I read some people who were not happy with that response, but I'm like... He, he was vigorous in his response and he published it publicly yeah. what do you want atheist guys <laughs> yeah i mean what yeah. is there to be unhappy about with that response yeah i don't know I that's don't know. a very tactful and aggressive i don't think it was tactful but it was aggressive <laughs> yeah. no it's, it's as tactful as i would have been i mean that's, that's way more tactful than i would have been <laughs> that's not tactful <laughs> on the tactful scale you fall not anywhere in that <laughs> <laughs> that's so not even that's... high jay falls on the tactful scale <laughs> so not true Oh dear. All right. Do we want to move on to... That's your story, buddy. That's Felipe's story. Mm-hmm. Not, no, it's not. Yeah, yes, it is. No, it's not. And It is unclaimed, according uh, to did, the... Well, he... Woman chases away a healer sent to kill a goblin tormenting that's her. No. no. That's yours. That's on my sheet next. Oh, I'm sorry. No. You know what? I didn't move it on my freaking... Um, Gods and lobsters. I did move it, I but I didn't move it on... I, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. My bad. What are we talking about now, Christian? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> a 40-year-old woman shocked the ref- residents of her African village when she used a machete to chase off a healer who had been uh, hired by her daughters to kill her goblin. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> is please, it like, is please it like pillow tell pants me that's a euphemism. It's, it's pillow pants, isn't it? It's what? Pillow pants. I don't know what pillow pants is. You don't know what pillow pants is? What is pillow pants? It's it's the pussy troll. Yeah. Yeah. Pillow pants. (laughs) Okay, someone's gonna clue me in on the pussy troll. You can't have (laughs) sex with her before she's uh before Before she's married married. Uh, or else, if you stick it in, pillow pants will bite your dick off. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real thing that people are aware of. <laughs> chat, Anyone who chat has room, seen a chat movie. It's from a movie. Oh, okay. What movie is this? Clerks, Clerks 2. 2. I've seen that movie. I don't remember it. Pillow pants, okay. the pussy troll? This How do you escapes not you? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> Somehow I have a, I have what accomplished was the other it. one. There was pillow pants, and then he makes mention of another one. <laughs> oh yeah, I never remember. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Fuck balls. Um, Lemmy wits or something like that. Let me wink. <laughs> yeah. That was her, oh, like, mouth troll or something. Let me wink the uh, hamster that went in the gay people's... Oh. Wink. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's South Park. Oh, yeah. dear. All right. So her, her own daughters apparently hired the healer. Uh, the daughters had gone to him because they were having trouble finding someone who would marry them. I think because they're crazy. <laughs> um, and he convinced them that... Uh, their mother was keeping a goblin who was bewitching them and acting as their husband, and that was the reason no one would marry them. The Sounds m- legit. Right, right. Yeah. The mother insisted that her goblin has not caused anyone any trouble. <laughs> 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 and oh, this, wow. And this healer should leave her goblin alone. <laughs> Local, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just leave my goblin alone, you bastard. <laughs> I'm serious. This is from local news. I mean, this isn't from like a blog. This this is a report from local news in this African like village. Ghana it's, or something? Um, what the fuck is Zimbabwe. This? Zimbabwe. I actually did a lot of reading on this. I was like, huh, oh. what is this goblin thing? I could not find what the goblin was. I just kept getting pictures of like a, this little fetish, I guess, like a little statue of a goblin. And apparently this is like a common thing. People blame everything that mm-hmm. goes wrong on goblins. I can't remember the name of the one in South Africa. It's really, really popular. Um, uh, I'm pillow not... pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, the other name is Listerfiend. Oh, there Listerfiend. we go. Right. So, like, I did a search on this local news station. There are so many goblin stories. I know. It's insane. <laughs> like, um, the rich businessman who hired the uh, doctor or the healer or whatever to cut off the head of a goblin and mm-hmm. it exploded. Like it start, the, the goblin started to fight back and it just exploded. That's what goblins do, man. You gotta, you cannot be too careful when you're trying to kill goblins. That's really tough for a level one creature too. So, <laughs> so there are stories here about goblins going after teachers. Um, there's a man who died uh, trying to kill his goblin. Sure. Uh, there's a police who got run out of their police station by a goblin. Yeah. Oh, a thieving goblin raped a man and ruined his business. Raped a dude. <laughs> And ruined his business. I like how those two are connected. Like, also as an afterthought. No, this is only. this is really really common in South Africa. The the one I was yeah. thinking of, in Africa, the one the the Zulu mythology one is Tukaloshe or something. Like there there's like a common thread here. I didn't realize that it was outside out South Africa. Y'all need have... Ghostbusters. <laughs> Who are you gonna call? This is this is a good one. Goblin dressed like a rock star terrorizes family. Wow. This is like the news station in this in this area. That was actually just Gene Simmons on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> he does kind of resemble a goblin these yes. days. Was it was it the it was it the, what, the one from Midget Kiss though? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, oh goblins my. are a big problem. <laughs> Damn it, goblins. <laughs> Okay, oh, God, so let's move monsters. on to... Uh, that just gives a whole new... I, I always used to say cock goblin, because, like, you know, Jesus penis, God cock, cock goblin. It was just one of those expletives I used. It gives a new meaning to it. Apparently, George Carlin has a bit about goblins. Um, someone that. post that into the Atheist Airwaves Facebook page, because I would be interested in reading about <laughs> George Car- uh, listening to George Carlin talk about goblins. Yeah. Um, but not Ebola, though. No? No. Ebola... I- now I'm interested. Like, is Ebola from a the, goblin? I mean, it, it stands be. to reason. No, that's uh, West it? Africa, not South Africa. But you know, goblins migrate in the spring. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so they go north of the spring. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have you never seen a herd of goblins marching across the safari? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just hearing the Lion King music. <laughs> So moving on, Ebola. So Ebola is uh, is bad. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. It's very popular in West Africa here. <laughs> it's uh, it's the the new panic. All basically. the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> yeah, much like becoming atheists. Right. Where do um, I get it? Uh, go to Africa. Africa. <laughs> you need a goblin. Sierra um, Leone would be a good place. Yeah. Or Georgia. Yeah. So, so everybody's freaking out right now about Ebola, right? Because it's killed some folks over in West Africa, where they have not a lot of uh, not a lot of hygiene or um, medicine. 
uh, or so common, to speak. common sense. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so everybody's like, ah, Ebola, it's a mass plague, it's Jay's promised, you know, final Yay. solution or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing that they're not telling you on the news. Measles is more deadly than Ebola. Yeah. And because the anti-vaxxers are against vaccinating for measles and probably Ebola too. I mean, you know, <laughs> just saying. To be honest, I'd rather have Ebola than get a vaccination with mercury in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, basically. Yeah. So, so yeah, this, I just, oh my God, people. Yeah, the, the, lack, of, <laughs> the lack of common sense and skepticism here. I mean, th- this figure really blew my mind because for all of the panic that I've been listening to over the last few weeks, you know who you are. Um, <laughs> Ebola has killed fewer than 5,000 people ever, ever 5,000 people. Ever? M- measles killed 122,000 people in 2012 alone. Yeah. It's it, how many? Okay. Give me those 5,000 people ever for Ebola. And yes. how many so, yeah. measles last year? 122,000 in 2012. Well, you have to understand. 112,000. When you get Ebola, you're probably going to die. But because so many people aren't vaccinating, more people are getting measles while it has a lower death rate. Per person, per it's person. going to kill more, more people, people just because more stupid people aren't trying to protect themselves against mm-hmm. it because ooh, well, because they it, believe something else. They believe like science doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, it's so super easy to get measles in terms, mm-hmm. you know, when you compare it to Ebola. I mean, Ebola, yeah. you Ebola, have... Ebola, you have to come into contact right. with the you bodily have, flu. Right, you have to be like, ah, licking, <laughs> yeah. licking a victim of Ebola to... <laughs> Jay? <laughs> so, well, Jay could have Ebola. I did not agree actually, to lick an open wound. <laughs> and that relates it to the measles outbreak because a lot of reasons that people get... Ebola is because they don't put trust in science. So they go in and they storm their hospitals with guns and they take their family members to go to like traditional healers. Yeah. Well, here in the States, yeah, they, they don't believe, they believe that the vaccine is going to cause autism, it's going to cause illnesses. So they just don't get the vaccine for their kids because they think it's going to protect them, but it doesn't protect them. It spreads the disease, much like these African nations. There is a similarity there, yeah, a parallel I, even. I really enjoyed the, the quote from uh, from this article in Forbes. Mm-hmm. Um, it said, Western anti-vaxxers are just like the tribal people protesting against modern medical intervention to, tweet, to treat Ebola in Sierra Leone. Both groups oppose safe, modern medical intervention despite the overwhelming scientific evidence to its benefits, and both are foregoing treatments that have saved millions of lives in the 20th century and could save countless more in the future. It's basically, we, we eliminated measles too well it seems like people don't remember family members dying of measles, um, and so they forget. Yeah. And then... Well, and this is why I moved the story <laughs> to before, because I'm like, there's, in my view, there's very little difference between us and our anti-vaxxer craziness and the goblin people. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems crazy to us because it's not our brand of crazy. Mm-hmm. But we are, we are all harboring morons in our cultures yeah. who believe in goblins, who think that medicine is a conspiracy, and so they're breaking Ebola victims out of quarantine and infecting more and more people. Yeah. And we have the people who are like, uh, vaccines are a conspiracy, and yeah. we have to you know kill, make sure lots of babies die in order to avoid that. I don't think there's much difference between our cultures at all. Yeah, it's basically, they, they don't understand the science behind vaccines, so it's all a con. Yeah. Is, is the thing. And, and, you know, because I've heard so many times, like, Native Americans used to treat this blah, blah, blah with, you know, magical horse poo. Do you know what happened to the Native Americans? <laughs> they all well, died of smallpox. Not all of them. Not all of them, because some are still alive. And so I've we actually heard this. We, got one. <laughs> so it's like, we have one in the room. We have the last one, right? Yeah, here. it's just like, what are, what are you talking about? Like, like, I have some friends who are big into the essential oils right now. And like, essential oils, they smell really awesome. They can be relaxing. They can be relaxing. I put them in soap. I use soap. I make soap. I love soap. Now, I'm a bit ignorant. What are essential oils and how do they relate to homeopathy? <laughs> um, this homeopathy? Is homeopathy. Yeah. homeopathy. Homeopathy. Um, essential oils are like plant extract concentrated. What makes them essential? 
um, magic beans. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because you need them to live. <laughs> That's right. It's it's basically like the highest concentrate in the middle of the plant, so it's gotcha. essential oils. Um, yeah, but they don't have magical healing properties. Like the only thing that they've really shown in studies is that lavender, the scent of lavender, tends to calm people down. Hmm. But like drinking lavender doesn't do shit for you. Probably, it's probably like worse for you than drinking anything. Yeah, know. pretty much. Like people don't like to talk about the the problems with essential oils, especially the ingestion of essential oils. Like this is these new places, DoTerra essential oils and whatnot. It's basically a pyramid scheme. Um, they um, they tell you like put a couple drops in your water or whatever, and then you're you know protected from diseases and colds and Ebola. I have seen Ebola. <laughs> Seriously. Ebola essential oil? Well, it was like, it was a combination of essential oils that would help with keep Ebola. you clean from Ebola. So with these oils, did it like fry stuff in them or is it just like... No. What it's did just they do you put them? it like in your water and then you drink it. I, but I've... what they don't say is that there have been cases of people who put too much in their water and then it caused them to like build up in their kidneys and they went into renal failure and almost died. Yeah, right. nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've got a friend who who does the essential oil thing, mm-hmm. and like she puts in like little roller bottles, and like like the the roller cap bottles, like he had a deodorant with the roller ball or whatever, mm-hmm. but they're really small, and yeah, they smell great or whatever, and funny or fancy or whatever. Some of them they, they smell weird, and you like rub them on your wrist or your neck or whatever, and it's supposed to do a thing. Yeah, I, 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 I think I know, I know who you're talking about. You know, exactly, she, I, you know exactly who yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, she did that with me. I was like, huh, this did nothing for yeah, me. Yeah, those were essential oils. <laughs> Okay, okay then, so I just smell nice now. <laughs> Basically. It's about time. So, That's subjective. Um, <laughs> let, let, me, let me do a couple of updates from the chat room here because there's some good stuff in there. Um, first of all, uh, where did it all go? Uh, it's Wabbit Dylan. Why you guys talk so long? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so Alcoholico in the chat room says that uh, beer has helped him. He has, not call, he has not caught Ebola, and he <laughs> attributes that to the amount of beer he drinks. So... We are not getting, at least half of us are not getting <laughs> Ebola in this room. Uh, and then Sarah Kiefer in the chat room. Uh, Hi, Kiefer. You know, proving that we're still on this wavelength. Um, was asking why, the same question I asked, was why did they call them essential? And uh, uh, Rebel 1852 in the chat room says, you essentially have to be stupid to use it. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. Oh, yes. Very nice. Let's move on. Okay, so while essential oils may not help, there is one thing that will, um, at least according to preachers and ministers and crazy people like Temetope or TB Joshua. Seriously, this guy goes by tuberculosis. Seriously, yes, that was my first thought too. His name is TB. Um, <laughs> is he, he pestilence? Well, he's, he's causing pestilence because he's sending 4,000 bottles of holy water to Sierra Leone in order to cure Ebola. Sure. Yeah. Well, he also sent 50 grand. That's nice. Which is like, okay, I'm not real sure where that 50 grand's going. Maybe to, to make the army. more I feel like he just kind of like had it delivered to... Yeah, because he decided to charter a, uh, another $50,000 flight to get it all there. Well, right. of course. It's like UPS could have done it for 20 bucks, and you could have just done like $99,980. Right. If you wanted to spend that much money, you didn't have to do it like that. And he's, yeah, he sent holy water over there. And this is, on the surface, seems innocuous. But if you think about it, th- this is also the same place where people are killing their goblins. So they're going to go, oh, holy water. It solves this problem? Great. They're going to go drink their holy water or anoint themselves or do whatever the hell their essential oil, whatever the heck they're going to do. And they're going to go, oh, I'm cured. And then walk out into public Mm -hmm. and start spreading it. Yeah. Which is perfect. I like this guy. He's my hero. I I don't know what goes into water to make it anointing water. I know there is just like, you know, this is water for anointing or they're putting other things in it didn't you go to seminary aren't you supposed to know no, this? I, didn't, I, I was going to i did not go um, aren't you it like, was new improved anointing water it, it said so in the right oh, wow, article okay. new and it. improved formula well what does that mean what's in it it's got essential oils Is, but it can <laughs> baby herpes <laughs> <laughs> so it comes from the jews or, yes <laughs> Jesus was a Jew, man. No, I was thinking the moils with their their herpes on the baby's Right, yeah, Yeah. that's what I was thinking too. Um, I like the Jesus was Jew thing though too. I'm good with that. I'm just just saying like, I mean, if it's just water that's 
intended to anoint someone. I mean, at least that's a real thing. They can, 4,000 people can have a drink of water. That's good. $50,000. That's good. It probably got taken by some warlord or some guy who was just walking by when they dropped it off. But he could have sent it to me. I did pretty Yeah, I was going to say, oh, we should... <laughs> <laughs> we should we should ask this guy for for somebody. We'll just pretend we're doing Ebola research with uh, Alcoholico and his beer. <laughs> <laughs> or can we all pretend to have Ebola? Like, can we have a, a fake outbreak in South Texas amongst atheists? Atheists are catching Ebola, and we need well, your holy was... water to save us. You will be you will be the first African to send aid to the United States for an Ebola outbreak. Aid, You'll be aid, not AIDS. <laughs> I got <heard> AIDS too. <laughs> Uh, I think we can make this work. We should try. <laughs> oh, we'll buy every, we'll buy everyone a present. Every listener gets a present if we get this guy <laughs> to send us substantial okay. piles of cash. Okay, so we have to actually appoint someone to do this if this is going to happen. Okay, someone in the chat room just volunteer and you're going to do it. <laughs> it has to be someone accountable. They're just going to keep it all. <laughs> so none of us. Okay. So me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not giving you bastards a dime. All right, let's move on. Yeah, let's. <laughs> I think we've, we, we've killed the uh, tuberculosis Ebola guy. Is it my story next? No, it's mine. Okay. <clears throat> so in Mobile, Alabama, they are considering placing the motto In God We Trust on their administration building because war on religion, Christmas, blah, 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 whatever. Um, atheist Amanda Scott showed up to a council meeting to suggest that they also include a phrase that recognizes those citizens that don't believe. Um, <laughs> uh, and then local news station WKRG decided to f ask a Facebook uh, question and ask their view viewers what their thought uh, were. Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, those drugs are hardcore. What their thoughts were on the local woman who wants, quote, an a uh, atheist, misspelled, of course. They, they spelled it it's, A T H I E S T. To the most atheist? Yes, they're the atheist uh, motto placed next to In God We Trust. And that's when Alabama Department of Corrections officer, Benny Ashby, nice name, bro, decided he was going to speak up to and recommend that she be executed. Oh, yeah, because that's the logical next step. Let's right. kill her. <laughs> <laughs> Not just executed, executed for treason. Treason. Treason? Yes. Treason. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Um, Hemant Mehta over at the fam <clears throat> Friendly Atheist asked the Department of Corrections and this officer in particular for comments, and both of them blew him off, I, as you would. Yeah, when you say as, something that retarded? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, my first question is, you know, why is it that Christians are the only people who don't seem to understand uh, the philosophy underlying their own religion? The whole turn the other cheek thing just seems to escape them. So much death and violence and threats seem to come from those people because of their religion. I, I don't know the answer to your question, but it's true. I mean, I, I don't have a theory. I don't have a working theory on why it is. Yeah. So the other thing, the second thing that I, that I thought out of this story was this is actual persecution. This is death threats and intimidation. Mm -hmm. And this isn't the only guy who was uh, threatening this uh, woman. Um, this is far worse than the imaginary Christian persecution that we cover every week on this show. This is far worse than the real persecution that we actually find once in a while to talk about. <laughs> um, so congratulations, assholes. You are the people you fear most for yourselves. Yeah. You making me take my holy book out of hotel rooms <laughs> is exactly the same as me threatening the life of someone who doesn't agree with me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Good news is the Secular Student Alliance uh, awarded her an Outstanding Activism Award this week, which just came out today. Awesome. Excellent. What? what? <clears throat> So before we move on, because we've only got 17 minutes left, let's if talk you about want to be technical, let's talk about upcoming events. All right. Well, uh, first and foremost, we have Expedition Two, which uh, Sarah Kiefer is in the chat room. I wish you could be here for this, so we could really nail down Jay's team because we're going to no, beat your not. pants. You're going to get your asses kicked. So uh, Expedition Two is going to be the big Corpus Christi atheist cleaning up the beach. 
challenge. There are eight total teams that are involved in this. Four of them are from Corpus Christi Atheists, and all of them are represented by Atheist Airwaves. Uh, Represent. Yeah. So <laughs> Stevens and I are holding down the vets. That's right. We're, you guys are getting your ass kicked. We're, we're, we're winning this thing. <laughs> no. I've got like I've got more than a month to heal up. <laughs> You're so cute. High, high J is not going to be uh, <laughs> valuable on the beach for your team, I'm afraid. Well, it depends on what I'm high on. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do the math and just be like, ah, true. all the it's garbage. Uh, so you get points for the various different kinds of things you do. I, I feel like we need to make it interesting and uh, do a wager-based thing for... Like free, it. a free round for the winning team. At you know, I think we'll go to Michael Mays, down at Bob Hall Pier. Free round of drinks for the winning team, and then everything else to the charity of that team's choice. So, all of the teams, and I'll I'll set this up after this. We'll we'll have a lot more details next week. Every team needs to come up with a uh, a charity, a charity that they want to support. Nice, excellent. Is there a charity that uh, that like helps to produce Ebola? <laughs> and no, but we're gonna. We're, uh, TB, our friend TB, we're gonna like. <laughs> He's gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get him on the phone. We're gonna we create go. a charity. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the um, other thing is just uh, mentioning our Patreon channel. Thank you so much to everyone who is contributing over there. Um, Patreon.com/slash Atheist Airwaves. I don't even remember what we talked last about last week. We talked more about the uh, hedonism morality thing, yeah, and we had a follow up discussion on that. I got shot down by the by the sex spam bot again. <laughs> it was a little bit of a repeat of the last one. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. There was some other stuff in there. Um, so, uh, if you would what? like access to our post show content, and today we're going to be talking about uh, things like uh, the term. Well, I've got a lot of things like Jesus <laughs> was a sissy is something that's going around this town, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I want to talk about uh, something that Amanda brought up today, uh, which was uh, what it really feels like to be a child free woman and uh, the challenges of women who really don't want children. And I also want to talk about the terms Latinos versus Latinas. I've got some things that have been rattling around my brain. Really obvious things, but I'm, I'm, they've been bugging me, so I'm going to infest you guys with it. I want to add to the events. Yes. First, this Sunday, uh, Gorilla Gardening, Lower uh, Broadway, Corpus Christi, uh, 10 a.m. If you're in the Sunday? neighborhood. Uh, Saturday. Okay, sorry. good. <laughs> it's like yes. I wasn't planning on doing we're anything just, Sunday morning. Uh, we're just kind of cleaning up stuff that we've already planted because it's summer in South Texas and I'm an, you can't do anything. I'm an atheist. I don't do things on Sunday morning. <laughs> that's right. That's it's right. one of the benefits, nice. so Saturday I will for, do. <laughs> that's right. It's time for kolaches and donuts on Sunday right. morning. And also, okay, so you've heard of the Ice Bucket Challenge. Mm-hmm. Well, there is a new challenge that I think is just made for CCA, basically. It is the taco or beer challenge. For the Lilith Fund? Uh, you, can, you can choose any uh, abortion fund that you want to uh, support, but basically film yourself either eating a taco or drinking a beer and uh, make a donation to the abortion funds. I need to create an abortion fund for myself. <laughs> I think we can all agree with that. I, in fact, can I choose that? Is that something I can choose? I've got you, a beer right here. It might here. be a bit cheaper to get you the uh, vasectomy fund, so we might do that instead. That's not a bad idea. But yeah, if you do videotape yourself eating a taco or drinking a beer, uh, you can post it to taco or beer challenge dot tumblr dot com oh my behave, god Jay, Jay behave <laughs> i know what you're thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. okay uh, so is this is <laughs> he just no, got walk, into walk away <laughs> walk, no. step away from I am. Jay. No. I am step so away it, it, if, if we're gonna play <laughs> step away from the taco <laughs> yes if we're going to plug things, uh, this weekend, the uh, organization that I also work with, Burners Without Borders, we cleaned up 1,000 pounds of trash from the shotgun shell on the island. We have events from now through Halloween, another one this weekend, the following weekend, skipping two weekends, and then every single weekend thereafter. So if you're interested in going and doing some cleanups, get with me. Susan Turpin in the chat room says it's uh, the Don't Let Jay Have Any Kids Fund. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we can all get behind that. Definitely. I've been kicked in the balls enough it might already work, but <laughs> never be too sure. As the case <laughs> right. Okay, so let's talk about Shark Week. Um, let's. Ooh, ha, ha. This really, really irritates me. 
Uh, so the Discovery Channel and National Geographic and all of these so-called science channels who used to actually display and put on programs for that, that were actually scientifically educational and they, they're just degrading more and more. I haven't actually seen them in two, three years, so I can't imagine the level up right yeah. now. But the story that, that we found um, was really, really frustrating. Uh, for Shark Week, um, they decided to go interview some scientists that were doing research on sharks. And not even like air quote scientists, real like scientists. Like actual scientists yeah. performing actual field work on sure. sharks. And this particular one, they were studying bull sharks in Louisiana and uh, in some brackish water and things like that. And they uh, they came out and they said, "Hey, would you mind being part of Shark Week? We want to interview you and some of the you know about the, the the things you're doing." And of course, you know, as any scientist would more than likely do, go, "Yeah, um, I would love to have you know my research, you know, have a have a platform." So they came out there and they started asking him questions about this and about that. <clears throat> of course, when the scientists would ask questions about, so you know, what are you guys doing? And they were very vague about it. Mm -hmm. They they didn't really give him a straight answer. I believe it was a him. Yes. And they didn't give him a straight answer. And uh, they never really did. So he signed his consent forms and his release forms, and they went about their business until he saw what they released. Well, just uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting was that they kept trying to coach him on words to use right. and things to say. It's like, you know, can you give us that answer again? Only say it this way. And it got so obnoxious that eventually he said he was just saying, no, I'm not going to say that because I'm the scientist here, and I'm telling you, what right. what the real deal is the, exactly they were coaching him to uh, a high level as to what they wanted him to say and it got to the point where he, he was answering one question and at the end of the day what they were doing was they were editing the questions they asked him out right introducing a totally different question and giving his answer to a, you know to, and and patching them together so that it made it seem as if he was corroborating things that they were trying to suggest which right. he had absolutely no involvement in and it wound up being some stupid voodoo shark voodoo the, shark was the name of the was the name of the show and they mm -hmm. were talking about something called the rukin which is like this mythological shark that is a, supposedly haunting louisiana waters they never said anything to this guy but then they edited it to make it seem like his entire life's work was trying right. to find this thing. Right, and he's an actual scientist performing actual science on actual sharks that exist and are proven. And trying to do, you know, real world work. It, this is media tactics at an extreme where they're taking, you know, words and they're spinning them and they're cutting them and they're turning them into something absolutely op opposing to what the person was actually saying. And it's despicable. It's horrendous. And the worst part about it is that they present it as fact. Yes. I mean, I know people who believe these yeah. shows they make. I have a friend. We were sitting. I was just channel surfing one day and we passed through the mermaid one. And she was all like, put it back, put it back. This is so awesome. It's so cool. And it's so real. And <sighs> it finally gets to the point, part where the mermaids show up. And I'm like, oh, my God, this looks so fake. <laughs> because the CGI is yeah, bad, but right. she believes it. She believes that they're talking about real mermaids and these are real mermaids. The thing mm -hmm. is that they, they do this at such a level that some people who aren't retarded actually get fooled into this. Last year during Shark Week, it was just after Shark Week, someone that I have a lot of respect for and has lived down here many, many years is a yeah, fisherman and all that, said, hey man, you got to check this thing out. Go check out this documentary they did on this ginormous, basically megalodon that they think might still be alive. And it was one of these, these yeah, same and type I, of stories. Yeah, I saw that one too and it just looks so fake. Yeah, and I had to go back to this person and go look you're you're getting fooled here because this is bullshit yeah, <laughs> yeah little things i have to say i i feel like this should this level of editing and trickery should be illegal it should be absolutely uh, i agree because i mean they've really they've taken a legitimate scientist who was doing legitimate research at, at the time and now is working for texas parks and wildlife and they made it seem like he was looking for a voodoo shark. And that can be really damaging to his career if sure. it comes yeah. out like that. Actually, it yeah. should be illegal not just for the people who are watching it. Because the people who are watching it, if you're dumb enough to buy it, again, uh, whatever. But the, the scientists that are, that are getting involved in this, yeah, this is damaging to their reputations. Yeah. It's damaging to the science that's being done. It can potentially discourage them from doing these things. It's... I know, they, they used even worse tricks on some of the other shows that they did. They had one show called Sharkageddon, mm -hmm. which I guess they called it that because Sharknado was taken. And like literally Sharknado could be a show on Shark Week these days. Yeah. I mean, I've never basically. seen it, but I mean, I get the concept. I watched the first 10 minutes of it the other night. 
It's really bad. It, I it's couldn't so take any more. It's a sci-fi movie, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And I'm, Nato was. And, yeah, like a bad sci-fi. Sometimes yeah. I can be really into bad movies, but this was so bad, I had to shut it off for 10 minutes. Anyway, so in Sharkageddon, their premise was that shark attacks are, going, are on the increase, and pretty soon everyone's going to be eaten by a shark. And they're presenting this as fact. Not true. Yes, yes. They're <laughs> yeah. presenting that as fact. And to support it, one of the things they're doing... I, okay, control the rage. No, no, this is really rage. making me angry. Yeah. So the first thing is they, they're doing like basic Fox News graph stuff, which is they have, you know, <clears throat> zero to ten uh, shark attacks on the graph are, is like, you know, half an inch. And then ten to twenty is they like... They change the scale? Yeah, yeah, they change the scale. So it's like three inches there. So it looks like... 12 is like a huge increase over 10 shark attacks. Uh, the other thing is that they're ignoring the data. The data shows the trend of uh, shark attacks is level for decades and decades, but that does not help them sell this stupid crap. So um, they so, ignore that and they change the skill of thing. The only thing they didn't do is write Democrat next to the uh, sharks that are killing people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really, really sad that the, the Discovery Channel that does the Shark Week, they used to be 10 years ago. They were proponents of, you know, of fisheries and yeah. actual intelligent information being distributed to the public to, to help preserve the, the, the wildlife out there. And now they're putting crap like this out where they're, they're skewing data to make you think that sharks are evil. Yeah. And the History Channel used to have history on it. And the Learning Channel used to have some learning to it. And this That's, is just... It's really... It's, it's despicable. I mean, it, there needs to be something done. And all those company, all those channels, I believe, are owned by the same company, aren't they? I mean, are they? They I were been bought been... out Wouldn't about me. five, six years ago. And that's when all this like crap started getting put on these channels. And that's what it all comes down to. It well, works to make money. It's quote People unquote watch it. entertainment instead of knowledge. Uh, no, I, educational edu- entertainment. Yeah, oh, totally. Uh, I, I mean, this is the way the world's going, though, because I used to be a huge <laughs> fan of tech TV. And then they got bought, Esquire now. They got, is it really? Yeah, Esquire bought it. It used out. to be G4, I think. Mm-hmm, they yeah. got bought out and they changed it to G4, and suddenly it was all about boobs and yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, yep. pop culture and not tech at all. Yep. And I had to stop watching it. And now, I, and now it's Esquire. It's it, makes me, it makes me very sad. For well, I mean, I don't, I don't watch television and haven't watched television for a long time for, for the reasons like this. But it's just, it pisses me off that there are still people who, kids who would normally be, I got interested in a lot of the things I'm interested mm-hmm. in now, wildlife, because of the National Geographic Channel mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Discovery Channel. And now kids are watching this and they're being fed misinformation yeah. and they're going to live, a lot of them are going to live their entire lives thinking, thinking that mermaids are, are real. Yeah. I, Tech Leslie in the chat room says that she thinks it's a conspiracy to keep people out of the water. And I have to say that, I, you know, I live on North Padre Island. And I'm like really up to here with the tourists driving 30 miles an hour on the highway. Oh my. I could really get behind this conspiracy if it kept people off the island. You know what the <laughs> island needs? A Schlitterbein. really big hurricane. <laughs> I, I can't disagree with you. I can't disagree. It's going to happen one day. Yeah, I know it is. Yeah, there's been a bunch of stuff built here that's just in dumb places. <laughs> oh, you guys are about to make me away. go on a tangent. Hi, <laughs> Jay's getting pissed off. <laughs> but we, we are literally 15 years overdue for a direct hurricane strike. So oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's something that's going Isn't to happen. Isn't it like 40 years overdue for a big hurricane? Well, yeah. we're like 40 years overdue for a hurricane of any kind, but or one or the other. I don't remember. 15 for a hurricane of any kind, 40 for a big one. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it's not a good time to live in Corpus Christi, except for global warming sending them all up north. Yay, Yay global warming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got time for another few stories before we have to edit everything out. <laughs> what's, what's next? Because I'm always sure she's talking Felipe's up. next. We, 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 we're near, there's not enough time to worry about calling in. Yeah. All right, so. <clears throat> so Lone Star Q, an LGBT news, online news magazine, revealed last week that Corrine Morris Rodriguez signs filed for divorce from her husband because she was seeing another woman. Now, normally this wouldn't be newsworthy except for the fact that her husband was Jonathan Signs, and he's the current leader of Texas Valley, which is an anti-LGBT organization. Now, why he holds the position of being anti any kind of gay rights or anything like that in light of his divorce, I don't know, because in Catholic, he's a Catholic, he's a conservative Catholic, and in Catholic law, 
divorce is an excommunicable offense. Exactly. I and it makes no sense because it's okay for him to get a divorce, but it's wrong for LGBT people yeah. to live their lifestyles. They can go to hell, but yeah. he can get a divorce. The very same Bible calls divorce an abomination that calls homosexuality an abomination. Yeah. Guess what, bro? But you are the, you are you're a hypocrite. Yes. We're cherry and an picking, asshole. Though. That's what we do. Well, <laughs> I, I, you know, at first I was like, you know, Texas Values is the name of his hate organization. And, you know, of course it has values in it. So, you know, it's, it's a bullshit thing. And then I was thinking, you know, maybe he could add family to that and make it Texas Family Values. And then, you know, they're really hateful. But I'm mean, like... Well, that would just remind me of like 1999 with the Family Values Tour. Yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> um, but then I was like, this group should just go full on. We hate everybody and everything. And just call it the Texas Family Values Liberty Research Science Center. Bam. That is a hate group name. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are selling themselves short with this Texas Values crap. Um, Quit propagating that shit. I understand. I understand. Words have definitions, and definitions change based on usage. And these words have been appropriated by the religious right. No, I I get that. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. Quit propagating it. Quit talking about it because you're just making it more of a thing. No, no, no. I'm pointing it out so that it can stop being a thing, so that people will recognize it for what it is, which is an. you know, this, this is not a value. This is a, this is hate. Hate is not a human value. And so, when you allow people to have organizations called Liberty and Freedom and Research and Science and Values without saying th- without saying anything about it, they get they get away with it. They're trying to trick people through these words. And so, bringing it up is important. Yeah, I like it when they okay. say it's not hate. I just don't agree with your yes. lifestyle. Okay, well, I don't agree with yours. So, (laughs) like, I missed the chapter of the Bible that said you can't, you know, go to their wedding or (laughs) know them at all. Or or let them them a cake. Let them into your business. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't understand that. Like, when did that start? Like, I don't agree with your lifestyle. Therefore, you have to live over there in your lifestyle (laughs) ghetto and never venture into my area of the world. (laughs) Lifestyle ghetto. I like that. Here, here's like one of the really juicy things that I really love about this, and I feel like it's just a matter of time before his wife lets this fly. Uh, Jonathan Science has apparently been in treatment for many years for psychological problems of some sort. Mm-hmm. And during their his divorce to his wife, he attempted to compel his wife to turn over any and all documents she may have related to the counseling he underwent and the treatment he underwent for these problems. That divorce was fucked up. Yeah, it right? really <laughs> was. I mean, this guy's just psychotic. Yeah. Yeah, there are no there were no values in this divorce no. at all. Um, but it sounds like he has some really, really interesting, juicy skeletons in his <laughs> I closet. I totally agree. Yeah. I really, I mean, it's going to have something to do with sexual fetishes or something crazy like that. Mm-hmm. It's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, just everything in that divorce, it was just all about controlling her, mm-hmm. which was just mm-hmm. like, whoa, yep. calm yeah. down, pal. He, he yep. tried to make it so that his her girlfriend could not uh, see their children, which yeah. essentially controlled her sex life and her relationship. Yep. Yeah. You know, this guy has got serious problems, even beyond the normal ones that these people have, which yeah. is their you know, bigoted jackasses. Yeah, yeah. it, it comes down to, and I, I think it's probably uh, exacerbated by the fact that he is such a religious nut that, you know, the church, it, it, it says that, you know, women should be subservient to their men and it, mm-hmm. it, it propagates that control. So he's just, he's just doing what the good Bible says he should. That must right. piss him off so much oh, that know. his, that his wife is being so disobedient. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm so happy for her. I'm sure she's just got this, just, just joy inside of her now that he is just getting his ass beat by the legal system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That judge was pretty awesome, too. He, he was, like, I forget the quote exactly, but he was basically like, uh, so you're just basically trying to control her life despite the fact that you're divorced. That's not really going to fly, Bucko. Yeah, not going to work, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually surprised that some of that didn't work here in Texas. I, I, yeah, I, you're right. Yeah. Surprisingly. Uh, I was yeah. surprised that, he, that she had such a happy outcome being a lesbian divorcee. In Texas. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let's talk about Ken Ham before we Kevin. Kev. Ham. Let's talk about Kevin old Kev. Ham. Okay, so old Kev is up to some uh, some shady business regarding his uh, his little endeavors. He's trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What? <laughs> Kiefer666 in the chat room asks if she also had to turn over all of his gay porn. Uh, <laughs> probably. Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so Kev, Kev is up to some, some goofy stuff. Uh, he's got two things. He's obviously got the Answers in Genesis Foundation, which is a not-for-profit Christian deal, Bob, or whatever. Uh, and then he's trying to, to create the, what's it called, Ark, uh, Ark Encounter. Mm-hmm. It was called the Ark, Ark Experience, but... Uh, the Ark Encounter, which is a theme park, and it is a for-profit endeavor. Right. Ha- there's been and a- they're accepting public funds and tax right. breaks for it. Eighteen right. million dollars so far. Yeah. yeah. So they are hiring. Well, both Answers in Genesis and apparently Ark Encounter are both hiring, and somebody turned up a nice little uh, interesting job posting for a uh, a con- computer-aided design or whatever. Uh, position for Ark Encounter. It's really weird, like, computer-aided design, technician designer. It's we like, should yeah. get Josh yeah, to apply. We know uh, these Josh words does. are important. <laughs> right. We're going to put them together. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then they just throw the name of the of the business on the end of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's So it's one of those kind of thrown together things. But way down buried in the, uh, in the, in the fine text, items needed for possible employment include salvation testimony. What creation. the hell is that? It's basically like know. paperwork or your story of how you became saved. No, oh, whatever. Wow. Um, creation belief statement <laughs> and <laughs> confirmation of your agreement with the AIG statement of faith, which it, is answers in Genesis. Right. Which includes you have to believe that a, a marriage is between a man and a woman. That All this crazy right. stuff. So the, the problem here is that it's listed as a job for Ark Encounter, which right. is a for profit. For profit which means that if it's for profit, it is subject because to so many different laws than a religious not for profit. Mm-hmm. Whereas Answers in Genesis can get away with these things because right. they are religious not for profit. Right. Because religious organizations are allowed to discriminate on the basis of religion because you wouldn't want to hire a priest uh, for a Christian church who was Jewish or Muslim sure. or an atheist who was going to be like. <laughs> it, it makes it makes right. sense in that instance. A little bit, yeah. yeah okay, so I, I can let it slide. But the fact that he's got these two. Meshing together is, mm-hmm. is causing a little bit of, hmm, what's going on here? Yeah. And They're using it to get around mm-hmm. the hiring discrimination thing. They want it, They want the best, best of both worlds. Yep. They want the public dollars and the tax breaks, and they also want to discriminate against gay people and atheists. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is the only way they can do it. Is they, They're hiring someone who is sole job is to work with Ark Encounter, mm-hmm. but they're going to be an Answers in Genesis employee. What the hell ever? When questioned yeah. about it, no, no, it's an Ark Encounter job. It's, it's a, I'm sorry, it's, a, it's an Answers, answers in, in Genesis. Genesis job. Yeah, of course, it's an Answers, even though the job title has Ark Encounter in the name. What's the chat room say? Uh, sorry, Keeper666 is just cracking me up. She also says that you also need a written recommendation from God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kiefer, why don't you just move back? Right? <laughs> you know you want to live in South Texas again. I've got an open room. I need a roommate. It was 95 That's degrees awkward. today. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, there's, uh, I think the Americans United for search Separation of Church and State mm-hmm. is now uh, taking a look at it. They've agreed that there's some shaky ground going on here, and hopefully we'll see a lawsuit coming yeah, up they're soon. saying there may be a lawsuit. I, <clears throat> I, I don't know how you, that can't stand. Because, I mean, that would just be, yeah. I mean, everyone would do that. I mean, I'm just going to set up a 501c3, and then I'm going to hire everyone there to do to be. I'm going to hire everyone there to be consultants to work on my for-profit business, and that way I can get around this whole discrimination thing. Yep. No, no, no. <laughs> the world does not work that way. Sorry, you have no. to take your 18 million dollars and not discriminate, or you have to not discriminate um, and take your 18 dollars, whatever. I'll not discriminate and take $18 million. Personally, I think it's just lazy to actually include you have to be a Christian in the actual application process because normally people just discriminate at the interview process. It's true. (laughs) You're right about that. And then there's no paper trail. There's no problem. Which is how they'll wind up getting around it. Yeah, but, you know, what you can't expect much better, I guess, from a creationist. (laughs) They're not the brightest bulbs on the planet, I'm afraid. So we're going to go to the post show. Yeah, as soon as I find the document. 
Thank you for listening to Atheist Airwaves, sponsored by Corpus Christi Atheists and the South Texas Coalition of Reason. If you it, would like to compliment, complain, or make suggestions. Oh, damn it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please write us at god at atheistairwaves.com. Thanks to Tombstone to Dead Man for our outro music. See us on Facebook. See him on Facebook. Well, See us all on Facebook. Patreon.com backslash Atheist Airwaves. Any slash you want. Bye-bye. My tolerance for ignorance is non-existent. Why resist it? Because faith-based claims can't go the distance. You either going to stand up for reality or surrender to the fantasy. But either way, don't care if people mad at me. My criticism so much bigger than religion. It's about the fact that they're lacking in total skepticism. These days, it kind of seems like being skeptic is a negative. So my position is the faith's a type of mental sedative. The type of things I rap about are really not cerebral. There's just an overabundance of really stupid people who get offended when I challenge all this sacred shit. Fussing, complaining, but then abstain from debating it They want me suppressed So they try to say that I'm obsessed That need your reaction Whenever they hear my views expressed Some of the ones that ain't blind Sit on the sidelines Too scared to offend But then defend all those dumb lies You really think you stay and see you In a different light Because you're the type that's passive You're favorable inside this site You really think they think That you are not a not alike And that they don't imagine You burning hot in the afterlife To dumb you're just a sacrilegious blasphemy A tragedy A heathen who doesn't respect His holy majesty My contention Your respect they don't condemn that you never contradict them or speak against their convictions so this is where i'm making my stand and now regardless who don't like it or how they get mad see why the rest of y'all capitulate and go with the plan i'll be beating on this wall until i'm breaking my hand so listen while I state official policy No matter how I'm threatened with hell they never silence me I know that you don't see this as imperative But I refuse to lose and let the stupid frame the narrative There's a war in religion going on, you know it And right now Bibles are booted from Navy base guest rooms And an atheist group is telling a Georgia high school football team To punt the prayers That's right We've I just turned all the mics off here. If you go to visit Christian. someone who's in the Navy The guest rooms actually now um, no longer hold the Bibles And then Pause Okay That works I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna fuck break things. <laughs> Yays. Uh, uh, stay on this page. That's, that's fine. No, here, I'll, look, I'll let you do this. I don't fucking lose the whole shit. Like it? But the deal so does the spin. Oh, oh, you have to stop the thing. Alright, I'm gonna stop the thing. Stop the thing. Can I stop all the things? I stopped the music because the music rolled into it. Sounds like the mics are on though. Yeah. <laughs>